So going back in time, we've known about Z pinches for a long time. They were an initial approach to thinking about fusion. They went away for 70 years. You guys have brought them back and you think you are on, from what I can tell, the cusp of making them viable in a net positive power generation environment. So what's what's exciting about our approach is that um, the, the, the scaling is really significant. The, the, the relationship between the amount of electric current, so the amount of lightning bolt that we put through that shift flow stabilized Z-pinch, and the fusion reaction rate is an 11th power relationship, meaning if you double the current, you two to the power of 11, so two times two times two times 2,000 times the fusion reaction rate. So it's a really strong lever. So what we've been doing really successfully over the last few years is driving more current through our shear flow stabilized Z-pinch, not by building ever-increasing complex and, 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 and enormous machines that cost billions of dollars, but on that same small uh, device uh, the, where we can iterate really fast, driving more current through a shear flow stabilized Z-pinch and, and, and increasing plasma parameters, for example, you know, neutron yield and other things that demonstrate we, we're getting to a hot, dense plasma. So I, I'm going to play a clip here from, from you guys that shows what we're talking about, I think, in a much more illustrative format than just words. But when you talk about your comparison to systems that cost billions of dollars, uh, to me, what Zap is building is kind of like the anti-ITER, the major right. uh, fusion reaction over in Europe. Because it just seems so much simpler, smaller, modular, and easier to tweak because you don't have to spend 20 years building a magnetic array that can bend space and time, you know? Right. Uh, why, why hasn't this approach been more popular, Bench? Because it seems very logical to me to, to approach it in this way because there's so many advantages from my layman's perspective. I believe that the reason that we don't have fusion energy has got nothing to do with the science. And I can hear my 160 scientists next door uh, <laughs> suck, suck air through their teeth as I, as I say it. But the, the, the reason that we don't have fusion, I believe, is nothing to do with the science. It's because we've been building these billion dollar experiments that take several years to design, several uh... years to build, several years to commission, several years to do science. So on these 10 year time scales, we've been building these enormous devices where it's just impossible to rapidly iterate. So, you know, imagine spending a billion dollars on an iPhone prototype and building one iPhone prototype every 10 years. You know, you would never, ever uh, uh, achieve a commercial product. You know, to go from Windows 3 to an iPhone in 15 years, that kind of iteration just isn't possible. So um, it's one of the key differentiating uh, uh, factors of, of Zap. It's, it's our superpower, the ability to build devices with single digit millions, so orders of magnitude cheaper, an order of magnitude um, uh, faster. So we, we can build a new device in a year, yeah. um, less than a year. Um, we spend you know, uh, single digit millions, not hundreds of millions or billions, which allows us to iterate really fast. The fusion electricity that we produce is gonna be c competitive. And I think that's one of the things that the fusion community is, has, has largely ignored over the last 70 years, which is how much is this gonna cost? Yeah. And you know, if fusion electricity or fusion heat can't compete, um, there's going to be one fusion power plant in the world, and kids are going to go look at it on their school field trips, and they're going to say, right. "This, this is a fusion power plant. It's, it's not going to scale."